Good day, everybody. Welcome to the latest edition of Salem State University Biking Voices, where we highlight the many great things going on at this exciting institution and among the alumni community. We are recording today from Viking Hall, the newest of the residence halls at Salem State. The state-of-the-art building is LEED Gold certified for its energy efficiency and other sustainability features. In addition to housing, Viking Hall features a cafe, meeting room, and staff offices. This episode of SSU Viking Voices features our special guest, the 14th president of Salem State University, John D. Keenan. Previously, President Keenan served as general counsel and vice president of administration for Salem State. He was responsible for the university's day-to-day operations in support of its academic mission, overseeing human resources and equal opportunity, capital planning and facilities, information technology, risk assessment and management, and the university police. Prior to becoming president of the university, Keenan has had a distinguished career in public service that has included representing the 7th Essex District in the Massachusetts legislature from 2005 to 2014. Even then, a strong advocate for Salem State, President Keenan was a leading proponent of gaining university status. He also leveraged his experience to help fund the recently completed Sophia Gordon Center for the Creative and Performing Arts. A champion of many social causes, President Keenan voted to preserve marriage equality, address schoolyard bullying, and protect transgendered employees in the workplace. He is a resident of Salem along with his wife, Kara McLaughlin, and their two children, Aiden and Erin. President Keenan, welcome to the SSU Viking Voices podcast. Yeah, great. Thank you for having me here today, Guy. Appreciate it. How have those professional experiences prepared you for the role of president of the university? Well, I uh, anticipated that some of my previous experience, both as general counsel and as a state representative, would help me. Little did I understand how much overlap there would be in terms of my skill set that would be needed, and, and certainly in, in two areas, and that is the, the state government process, uh, Salem State University, as uh, all the state universities are, are creatures of the state, if you will, in terms of their funding. Um, and secondly, and perhaps even more importantly, I would tell you, is the ability to deal with different constituencies, and that being the students, the faculty, the staff, the local community, the parents. There's a lot of different constituencies that I deal with on a, a daily or regular basis, and I think that skill set in my, in my past life has really been useful. Do you have any specific examples of something that's happened that you could point to? Yeah, I think most specifically, certainly uh, in, in regards to your area here, and that is dealing with alumni. So one of the things I was certainly fortunate having grown up in the community here in the city of Salem, having worked here for a few years, I knew a lot of the people on the campus. I knew most of the people in the community. Um, but I wasn't as familiar with a lot of the alumni. And so I've really worked the first year to try to build on those relationships and use the skills that I had uh, as a state representative to really reach out to people and get to know them and, and see what their interests are in the success of the university. And also just to build camaraderie and, and understand that we're in this together and uh, we have a lot of work to do, but uh, to build those relationships. I think, I think that was very helpful to me in the first year. What surprised you in your role? I'll tell you what surprised me in the role, and uh, probably shouldn't have because I know how uh, much energy President Meservi had, but the thing that surprised me most has been the the pace. It it is a very fast-paced job, and days meld into weeks, into months, and before you know it, the year is over, and and there's a lot happening. Um, This time of the year is is a busy time, Um, and certainly into May when we have commencement and a lot of other activities going on, it's a busy time. So um, one of the things other presidents have told me about was to... um, take care of yourself physically and mentally, and and that's an important part of the job to be able to sustain the pace of of this uh, position. And and I will say this, I I very much enjoy it, um, but it was a little bit surprising to me. I know that physically you're keeping good care of yourself because one of my fellow alumni members uh, said they see you at spin class down at the Y. Uh, (laughs) Yes, unfortunately, that that is the only hour so far of the week that I've been working out. Um, I do hope to get a a few more hours in, but uh, I do enjoy doing the spinning. In fact, I, I think I do some of my best thinking and planning for the week on the, on the spin cycle for an hour. Well, I know it's been a fast 12 months, but what are you most proud of in the first year? What I'm most proud of, President Missouri had suggested that I go to New President School, and, and I did do that uh, last fall. And there were about 30 of us from all around the country, actually uh, globally. There was someone from Pakistan, someone from Afghanistan. And one of the things I realized in the first year, the importance really of building relationships. You know, as I've talked about already, Building relationships with alumni was very important. Building relationships with the faculty here on campus, as you may know, I, 
I did not have an academic background. Uh, I was not even in higher ed before coming here as general counsel. So building the relationship with the faculty, building a relationship with the students here on campus so that they would trust me and know that I would be worthy uh, of leading this wonderful institution, and building up trust in the community, uh, right here in the local community. When I came on as general counsel, one of the issues that came up that created some distrust in the neighborhood was the new garage that was built and the positioning and placing of that. So I've really worked hard the first year to build those relationships so I know going forward I will have partners in all of, all of those areas to achieve what we want to achieve. And, and by and large, that's what most presidents who have talked about their first year have talked about doing. You, you're not going to change a lot in your first year, but you should build those relationships. And I've worked on that. Great, great. So what do you see as the biggest challenge for the university in the next couple of years? Uh, biggest challenge for this university, really, um, all of public higher education and a lot of private higher education is financial sustainability. So there are a lot of challenges facing and, and headwinds facing higher education in, right here in the Commonwealth. Uh, and that is attributable as well to the financial pressures that our students feel and the affordability of, of either of our state universities. I, I don't know, what year did you graduate, Guy? 89. 89. And, and perhaps back then even, uh, in your summer employment and otherwise, you could pay for most of your tuition the following year. Uh, our students are no longer able to do that. Uh, yep. And we're seeing some pressure on retention on our students in the second and third year not being able to afford. So I think the challenge is uh, making sure we, we, we remain affordable for our constituents in this area, in the greater North Shore region, uh, so that we're able to um, have our students be successful and make it through uh, in a timely manner. But affordability, I think, is the biggest challenge. Looking in from the outside, you have a certain perspective on what it's going to be when you get in the seat. How has being president changed your perspective and the challenges? Yeah, you know, being an uh, internal candidate uh, for the position of president here at Salem State, um, I, had, I had a certain portfolio. So I had uh, a lot of the operations side, I had public safety, I had facilities, I had maintenance, I had a lot of those areas. But um, once you become president, you really have uh, 30,000 feet, right? You have, the, you have the big picture of the entire university. And I have several vice presidents that report into me that whether it's enrollment or the academic mission or student life, all those pieces come into me. So I, I think my job and what I didn't realize is it's really my job to sort of be um, the leader of the band, if you will, and bring that all together so that we're playing music uh, that, that, that sounds pretty good. Um, and that's really what I try to do is, is, is utilize. And I was fortunate to inherit a wonderful senior team that President Missouri put in place. And my job as president really is I do not have the expertise that each of them have in their own capacity, is to really push them and put them in the right place so that they can utilize their skills to the fullest for the advancement of, this, of, of the university. And that's what I try to do on a regular basis. Do you have personal goals as president of the university? You know, that's, a, that's an interesting question. I would say I don't really have personal goals. My goals, uh, as they should, I think, align with our strategic goals. And we spent a lot of time on this campus in the last 12 to 18 months creating a strategic plan through shared governance, which means input from a lot of different areas on campus, our faculty, our students, our staff. We had over 2,000 touch points in that strategic plan, and our strategic plan is sound, and it is this. You know, student success has always got to be number one. That's the most important thing we do. Academic excellence, we have wonderful faculty who uh, are very concerned and caring for our students here. Financial sustainability is something that's important and that I sort of touched on a little bit. And finally, inclusive excellence and making sure everybody, everybody, I don't care where you come from, what dem demographic, what race, that you feel welcome and comfortable here. So those are really my personal goals are, are the strategic goals. And everything we talk about, uh, whether at the Board of Trustees or whether at the President's Executive Council or the PEC, as it's called, really is always has to come back to, all right, how does this advance our strategic plan? And most importantly, how does it, it uh, advance student success? But that's why I'm here. That's why I think everybody is here. And I think that's probably why you give back to this campus. There's about 62,000 Salem State alumni. Right. About 51.6 thousand of those people live in Massachusetts. Almost 40,000 today live in Essex and yeah. Middlesex County. How do you, important are the Salem State alumni to the economic, cultural, and civic spheres of yeah. the Commonwealth? You know, I did a TV show over in Lynn yesterday, uh, The American Dream, and talked very much to this. I was there with President Gentili from North Shore Community College, and we were talking about North Shore and Salem State as really being the economic backbone or core, if you will, of the North Shore. We provide the workforce. There's really not a place that I go into, either in Salem or elsewhere on the North Shore, that I don't bump into someone who's proud to tell me they're an alumni of Salem State the cultural activities, really anywhere you go in the North Shore, we have uh, some sort of involvement. And that is largely because 
we draw 80% of our students from within 20 miles. And most of those students, as you've just described, stay within this region as well. So um, it's great for the region. It's also wonderful to lead an institution where most of the people end up sticking around and, and makes for opportunities to come back to our campus and be involved. You talked a little bit about your interactions in your first year with the alumni community. From career services to the Enterprise Center, to the Gasset facilities, to the Berry Library, uh, to the Sophia, and all the cultural and sporting events that go on. The many ways that Salem State continues to be important in the lives of the alumni. What will you say to those who haven't recently had yeah. the opportunity to come back here and explore the benefits of being an alum? Yeah, please come back. And, and that's what I talk to when I see parents of students, of students who are thinking of come to Salem State. Much like yourself, a lot of uh, alumni who haven't been here in 10, 15, 20 years. The campus has changed quite a bit. I tell them to come back to Central Campus. This very space that we're in right now at Starbucks, part of Viking Hall, our newest residence hall. Um, we've really made a lot of changes and a lot of changes for the better of the university. But I welcome them to come back and get involved in one way or another. Whether it's in fundraising or getting involved in our next uh, campaign that we'll start. Um, as being a mentor to one of our students uh, professionally. Are you in an area that one of our students is thinking about going into? Um, talk to them about that. Help them find their way professionally. There are lots of different ways you can get involved and lots of different ways you can come enjoy our campus, whether it's at the, you know, the $25 million renovated Sophia Gordon Center for the Creative and Performing Arts or in our athletic facilities. Please, please come back and, and, and look me up if you do. I'm right at 331 Lafayette Street and my door is always open. I'm, I'm always happy to talk to you. He's everywhere, alumni. folks. I am. I am. <laughs> I put in long days. Indeed, indeed. So how can uh, members of the alumni community help you achieve your goals for the institution? Yeah. One of the biggest ways to help is either in your professional capacity, provide an in internship for some of our students, provide uh, a four credit class, for example, or a support that they might be able to do, provide paid uh, employment over the summer or during the course of the year, that would be a great help. Uh, but more importantly, tell me how I can do my job better. As I said, I've spent a lot of the first year really getting to know the alumni, getting to know the community a little bit better. I want to be the best possible president I can for this institution. I can't do it alone. And to have some of those 62,000 alumni in the area uh, help me achieve those goals of the university would be a huge benefit, both to me personally, uh, in my professional development, and to this wonderful institution known as Salem State. Somebody hears this podcast and they're motivated to do something right away, who would they get in touch with? Yeah, get in touch either with my office or, or Mike Mitchell, who's in institutional advancement, works with the Alumni Association. Uh, his number is 978-542-7530. Uh, he'd be more than happy to talk to you, and if you actually come in and visit him, uh, my office is right upstairs from Mike, too, and, and please stop by and say hello. Well, we're just about done here. As we've been talking, is there anything that's come to mind that we haven't discussed? You know, the other thing I would say, a, a couple days after election now, one of the things that I'm extremely proud about Salem State is the level of civic engagement. I came from a political background. I had run for office, and then I got here. One of the reasons I wanted to come here is because Salem State had a great tradition in civic engagement. We experienced it through this uh, election cycle. We registered over 800 students to vote. We had a wonderful turnout. We've been very engaged in terms of the ballot questions. Just uh, two nights ago, we had Paul Farmer here in the Salem State Speaker Series. It's one of the most uh, prestigious in all of New England in terms of speaker series. So. We really do try to give back to the community. And one of the things I say to my students all the time, our students here, is we do want you to be successful in the classroom. But as important to me and as important to our democracy is that you're also uh, successful outside of the classroom. And that means getting involved. That means voting. That means working on issues that you're passionate about, whether it's the environment, whether it's about immigration, whatever issue it is that's important to you, please get involved. And, and that's one of the things I think a lot of our alumni are proud about and something that I'm happy to uh, build even more upon here at Salem State. President John Keenan, great, thank you very great. much for being on the podcast. Thank you. It's great. It's a pleasure. Dear audience, thank you for listening to the Salem State University Viking Voices podcast. Join us again for another episode to hear more about many great things that are going on at this exciting institution and among our alumni community. Fellow Vikings and those interested in Salem State University, we hope that you have enjoyed this edition of Salem State University Viking Voices. Want to be a part of the many exciting things that are going on at Salem State today? There are many chances during the academic year to join the Viking efforts to improve our communities, network with fellow alumni, students, faculty, and just to have fun. Many of these are free events. For a complete listing of events during the 2018-19 academic year, please visit salemstate.edu forward slash calendar. Whether your passion runs to arts, culture, politics, sports, and more, there's something for every taste. 
Examples this semester include the Righty Series. In sports this fall, competitions in basketball, field hockey, ice hockey, soccer, tennis, and many more take place. Some sporting events require a modest entrance fee that goes to support the athletic programs. These are just a few of the highlights of the fall 2018 semester. Another way to be a part and to be a force in the expansion and continuation of the mission of the university is to donate to the Salem State Foundation. The foundation was incorporated in 1997 and is a 501c3 private not-for-profit organization. Contributions to the foundation directly support Salem State's mission to provide high-quality, student-centered education that prepares a diverse community of learners to contribute responsibly and creatively to a global society, and the foundation serves as a resource to advance the region's cultural, social, and economic development. For more information on the foundation, please visit salemstate.edu forward slash alumni hyphen and hyphen friends forward slash volunteer forward slash Salem hyphen state hyphen foundation. Please remember that you can follow Salem State University Viking Voices podcast wherever you get your podcast. Please use social media to give us your likes, send us your comments, share us. Thank you for listening. This is Guy Clinch wishing you all a very Viking day.